In a medical malpractice case, if you fail to produce documentation to confirm that you suffered significant lost earnings and loss of earning capacity, what's going to happen to that part of your claim? You want to know the answer? Come join me for a walk near the beach as I share with you the answer to that question. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski, a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. You suffered significant harm and injury as a result of a doctor's carelessness. And now, as a result of your injuries, you are claiming that you lost considerable income. You are claiming that you were out of work for over a year. You are claiming that your ability to continue the type of work you did is now going to be significantly impaired and there is no possible way you could ever return back to the type of work that you used to do. Okay, so now we include that as part of your claim. During the course of the lawsuit, the defense turns around and says, okay, I see you've made a claim for lost earnings as well as loss of earning capacity. Can you please validate and verify and send us documentation to show us that you were out of work for a period of time, to show us what you were earning before you got injured, to show us if you've tried to go back to work, to show us if you've been able to earn any money at all since the time of this injury, to show us how your earning capacity has now been affected, and you turn around and say, I'm not producing my tax returns. I'm not producing my work records. I'm not producing my attendance records. I don't want the defense to see what I did every day for work. I don't want them to see how much I earned. That's none of their business. Now, I want to share something with you. You have every right to feel that way. You have every single right to go ahead and believe that nobody is entitled to see any of that information. Before you suffered an injury, before you decided to bring a lawsuit, now, you had every right to withhold that information from friends, from family, from anybody you wanted to. That was your right because you don't have to share that information with anybody except maybe your accountant and your spouse or your family if you want to. But the reality is, before ever considering a lawsuit, you don't ever have to disclose that information except to the legal authorities if necessary. So now, you decide to bring a lawsuit. You believe that your doctor was careless and caused you significant harm and injury. A medical expert has confirmed that yes, your doctor was careless. Yes, that carelessness was a cause of your injury. And yes, your injuries truly are significant and permanent. Now, you had a great job before all this happened. And you were working there for many, many years. And you were well rewarded. And you were one of the top people in that company and you had gotten awards and certificates for being outstanding in your field. And that is wonderful. But now you're saying, hey, as a result of these particular injuries that I received because of this doctor's carelessness, I couldn't go back to work. I was hospitalized for months. I was disabled. I was limited from doing the activity that I was hired to do. And as a result of that, I should be able to receive compensation. I should be able to receive money for those losses. And you know what? The reality is you're right. That is part of a claim involving medical malpractice. That is one element of damages, what we call loss of earnings. If you are unable to return to work, if your ability to earn the same type of income that you did is now affected and impaired, and now you can no longer do those things that you used to do, including the type of work you used to do, yes, we can and should include that as part of your damages claim. But now, here's the dilemma. Here's the conflict. You turn around and don't believe that the defense has any right whatsoever to see personal documentation about your income tax records. You believe that they should not be allowed to see your W-2 forms. You believe that there is no possible reason to give them your attendance records from your employment. You feel that they absolutely should not get any detailed information about the type of work you did and how you were able to do it as well as all the great awards that you got. And you feel that way because that's your own personal belief. But let me open your eyes to something that you may not realize. When you bring a lawsuit and you are now claiming these elements of damages, specifically the pecuniary loss, the financial loss to you and your family as a result of what occurred to you, now the defense turns around and says, okay, I see, Ojinski, that your client is claiming the following things. And your client is claiming lost earnings. Your client is claiming that he can't do the type of work he used to do. Well, we need to validate, we need to verify that that's true. And the only way we can verify that that is accurate and true is if you share with us 
those tax records. We need to see what he was earning before for a couple of years before this incident occurred. We need to see the progression of his income. Did he receive any bonuses? Were there any benefits associated with his particular employment? What type of awards did he receive? What type of employee was he? What was his attendance record? If we are unable to verify any of the information that you are claiming about this particular part of the claim, then how can we truly say, yes, you're right, he did lose income. Yes, you're right, his ability to earn this type of income is now impaired. Because if we have nothing to base it on, then we are going to be significantly prejudiced in defending this part of the claim. It is to your benefit, they will argue. It's to your benefit, to your client's benefit, to share that information with us so that we can go ahead and confirm that yes, he suffered all of these financial losses because of these injuries. If you are unable to do that, we're going to have no choice but to ask the judge, ask the court to prevent you, to preclude you from producing this type of evidence when the case goes to trial. And for purposes of settlement discussions, we are not going to consider any aspect of your lost earnings claim. Why? Because we can't verify that what you are claiming is true. And if we can't verify it, then we are certainly not going to include that in any discussions, any settlement negotiations, because we have no clue whether or not this is accurate and true. So getting back to the question I raised at the beginning of this video, if you bring this type of claim, lost earnings claim, loss of earning capacity, and you fail to disclose your employment history, you fail to disclose your income tax, you fail to disclose certain documentation, to show and validate to the defense that you in fact have suffered significant lost earnings and have lost the capacity to earn the same amount of money that you are going to earn over the course of the next number of years, then the defense truly will be prejudiced and there is no way for you to go forward with a claim for your lost income. Now, for those of you who are familiar with this type of claim, you should know that the only time you have to provide in New York your income tax records is if you are self-employed. On the other hand, if you are working for a particular company, we will have to provide W-2 forms to establish exactly what your income was from your particular employment for a period of years before this incident occurred, as well as any income you received after the injury occurred. So why do I share this great information with you? I share it with you to open your eyes to help you understand how these types of cases work in the state of New York. You know, I recognize you're likely watching this video because you have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen in New York and you are thinking about bringing a lawsuit but haven't done so yet because you still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know I answer questions like yours every single day and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a fantastic day.